ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله قال تعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون أما بعد. Praise and thanks are to Allah alone. No partners with Him. And peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and messenger. I advise you and advise myself to fear Allah. As Allah said in the Quran, O oh, you who believe, fear Allah the way he should be feared, and do not die except Muslims. Today I was asked to give a khutbah, and to be honest with you, I was kind of puzzled which topic I should talk about. Until <clears throat> Recently, I faced some brothers and sisters who are facing some challenges, some hardship. This hardship could be for financial reasons, could be job reasons, family reasons, family issues. And I want to encapsulate the solution for all that as much as I could. But I found that Islam is so vast and so big and a lot of ahadith, a lot of solutions. I cannot put all that in one khutbah. Until I found a hadith. And if they told me there will be one khutbah in your lifetime, one khutbah, one topic that you will talk about, it will be this one. Among all the topics and all the khutbahs and all the issues, if they will tell you me, if they ask me which topic you will choose to talk to your people about it and give advice, it will be this one. Why? Because it summarizes the experience of someone who lived more than 1300 years. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was sitting among the, his companions and there was some commotions. And then he told them a hadith on behalf of Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. So Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, he was almost dying. Imagine someone with the experience of 950 years in da'wah and 1300 years total in life, he will encapsulate all his experience in only two sentences. To give this advice and last advice to his son. So I want you to listen to me with your heart, not with your ears. I will say the hadith in Arabic first, and then I will translate it inshallah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. إن نبي الله نوحا صلى الله عليه وسلم لما حضرته الوفاة قال لابنه إني قاص عليك الوصية آمرك باثنتين وأنهاك عن اثنتين آمرك بلا إله إلا الله فإن السماوات السبع والأراضين السبع 
لو وضعت في كفة ووضعت لا إله إلا الله في كفة رجحت بهن لا إله إلا الله ولو أن السماوات السبع والأرضين السبع كن حلقة مبهمة قسمت هن لا إله إلا الله وسبحان الله وبحمده فإنها صلاة كل شيء وبها يرزق الخلق وأنهاك عن الشرك والكبر قال قلت أو قيل يا رسول الله هذا الشرك قد عرفناه فما الكبر قال الكبر أن يكون لأحدنا نعلان حسنتان لهما شراكان حسنان قال لا قال الرجل أهو أن يكون لأحدنا حلة يلبسها قال لا قال أن يكون لأحدنا دابة يركبها قال لا قال أفهو أن يكون لأحدنا أصحاب يجلسون إليه قال لا قيل يا رسول الله فما الكبر قال سفه الحق وغمص الناس So I will explain this hadith in شاء الله in English Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم was sitting among his companions and he said that Prophet Nuh عليه السلام when his death came, he brought his son and he said to him, I'm going to give you the wasiyah, my will, before death. I will order you to do two things and I will forbid you to do two things. The two things that I order you to do is to say, La ilaha illallah. And then he said, that the seven heavens and the seven earths if they put on a scale and they put on the other scale La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah will be heavier. And if the whole earth and the seven heavens and all what is in them, both of them, are combined in one plaque, solid plaque, La ilaha illallah can break it in half. So this is one. The second one, to say Subhanallah wa bihamdi, glory are to Allah and thanks are to Him. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, that it is the prayer of every thing, and by it Allah provide everything. Allah provide for everything that says Subhanallah wa bihamdi. And I forbid you from shirk to associate anyone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And al-kibr, pride. So the man, one of the men, one of the companions asked him, so the shirk, we know what is shirk. We know that what is associating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what is kibr? So he asked the Prophet, is al-kibr that somebody has nice shoes? So the Prophet said no. So he asked him, is it al-kibr that somebody would buy nice garments and nice clothes? He said no. So he asked him, is it al-kibr to have a nice ride and camel or a horse or nowadays would be a car? The Prophet said no. So he said, is it kibr means that the pride that somebody will be surrounded by people and they are listening to him and he's talking to them? He said no. So he asked him, so what is kibr? He said, safahul haq, which means rejecting the truth. Wa ghamsun nas, belittling people. So the pride is rejecting the truth and belittling people, humiliating people, think that you are better than others. My main concern here are that he said to him, uh, Nuh said to his, his son, 
that la ilaha illallah is stronger than anything on earth not only on earth is stronger even the earth and the heaven and what's in them combined as if you put them all in one plaque and it's solid still la ilaha illallah will break it so ulama said that means if you have any problem any challenge any hardship you say la ilaha illallah and you face it nothing can be stronger than the whole earth and whole heavens and what is in between them in front of la ilaha illallah we have to say constantly la ilaha illallah the strongest thing and he said this is number one and he said and say subhanallah wa bihamdi this is the prayer of everything everything animals insects they say subhanallah wa bihamdi in their own language in their own language they say subhanallah wa bihamdi if you want to know what does the bird say what does the animal say what does the insect say? What does the worm in the earth say? They say, Subhanallah wa bihamdi. This is their tasbih in their own language. And then he continued and he said, And by them Allah provide to them by saying, Subhanallah wa bihamdi. So because they are saying, Subhanallah wa bihamdi, Allah provide for them. This is the reason why they, they get provided. So of the whole universe, from the angels to the smallest insect, say, Subhanallah wa bihamdi, and they get rizq because of this. Where are we from that? So if you have any problem and you want to have rizq, if you have any challenges in your life, if you have rizq that is not enough and you want more, just say, keep saying, Subhanallah wa bihamdi, Subhanallah al -Azim. Keep saying it, repeating it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that whoever say it, Allah would provide for him. So what is the proof of this hadith? Is it backed up by the Quran? So there are many verses in the Quran that backing up this hadith. In Surah Al-Isra, for example, قال تعالى تسبح له السماوات السبع والأرض ومن فيهن وإن من شيء إلا يسبح بحمده ولكن لا تفقهون تسبيحهم إنه كان حليما غفورا Allah said in the Quran in Surah Al-Isra that السماوات, the whole heavens and the earth make tasbih to him and whatever inside them make tasbih to him and what is the tasbih? he said إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَبِحَمْدِهِ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ you do not understand their tasbih you do not understand their supplication you will not understand it إِنَّهُ كَانَ حَلِيمًا غَفُورًا you have to understand this part. Haliman mean here patient and lenient, that Allah is lenient with you. Do you know the ulama, the scholars, they said when you see the word lenient, halim, that means that the people deserve punishment, but Allah was lenient to them and he was forgiving. So why, why Allah said put here halim? They said that he put Halim here because people don't say this application. They don't make tasbih. But yet Allah provides to them. So even though that all nation, all kind of creation say subhanallah wa bihamdi, and by this Allah provides for them, and people do not, prov do not make tasbih, but yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them rizq. So this is why they said he put Halim on here because he was lenient and patient with us. So what about if you have a problem? People are against you, either at work or in life 
or things are not going the way that you want to go. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again showing us the solution for this in the Quran. When he was talking to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, فَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا يَقُولُونَ وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ قَبْلَ طُلُوعِ الشَّمْسَ وَقَبْلَ غُرُوبِهَا وَمِنْ آنَاءِ اللَّيْلِ فَسَبِّحْ وَأَطْرَافَ النَّهَارِ لَعَلَّكَ تَرْضَى Allah here is saying, be patient about what they are saying about you. They are saying lies about you. They are attacking you. They are belittling you, humiliating you, insulting you. So be patient and say, Subhanallah wa bihamdu. This is the solution. Say, Subhanallah wa bihamdu. Before the sunrise, which is after Fajr, and before sunset, and during the night, and during the day. لَعَلَّكَ تَرْضَى That you may be pleased. And the ulama, the scholar said, when Allah said you may be pleased, it means that you will be pleased. Allah will make you pleased. When Allah said la'alla, means you may, that means you will. So if you have any hardship, people are against you, or circumstances are not going the way that you want, or any kind of hardship or difficulties, what is the solution? Allah is telling us, then say, Subhanallah wa bihamdi. All the time, the whole day, la'allaka tarda, that you may be pleased, which means you will be pleased. Allah is promising you that you will be pleased. You will be happy. You will be satisfied. So this is the solution. This is confirm what Nuh alayhi salam said to his son in the hadith. And when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again faced some troubles, and Allah said in the Quran, وَاصْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكَ فَإِنَّكَ بِأَعْيُنِنَا وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدُ رَبِّكَ حِينَ تَقُومْ وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَسَبِّحْهُ وَإِدْبَارَ النُّجُومِ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that be patient about what's going on in your life. That you are in our eyes. What does that mean that you are in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You are under his protection. You are under the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ And say subhanallah wa bihamdih. حِينَ تَقُوم Here the ulama and the scholars they said, Hina taqoom means when you stand up, like every time you are sitting down, when you stand up, you say, Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Or they said, Hina taqoom means when you go to pray, starting the prayer to say, Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Or when you wake up from sleeping. When you wake up, you say, Subhanallah wa bihamdi. So some scholars said, Well, how about if you say it, all of them? in all situations. It's not a mandatory, but it's part of our supplications that we have to do. So if you have any problems, even if you don't have a problem, if you, you want to have be blessed, you want to have blessings upon you, showers of blessings upon you, just say Subhanallah wa bihamdi in every time, in every movement. When you go to pray, when you wake up, when you wake, go to uh, standing up from sitting down, And the ulama, the scholar said, when there is a verse that talks about Prophet Muhammad, we have a share of this verse. When it says, إِنَّكَ بِأَعْيُونِنَا That means we can be under the protection of Allah as well. It's not, this verse is not only to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at uh, Prophet Yahya. Asif, Prophet Zakaria, Sayyidina Zakaria alayhi salam. When he wanted to have a son, so what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advised him to have a son? Qala Rabbi 
قال آيتك ألا تكلم الناس ثلاثة أيام إلا رمزا واذكر ربك كثيرا وسبح بالعشي والإبكار So Prophet Zakaria asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a sign that uh, to have a son he wants to have a son he was an old, old man so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said that his sign is that you do not talk to people for three days and mention Allah all the time and make tasbih day and night so the tasbih is what made Zakaria have a son remember the first part of the hadith that this is by the subhanallah wa bihamdi kulla shay ya'khudh rizq yurzaqu kulla shay everybody get his rizq because of subhanallah wa bihamdi everything including us including human beings another one another ayah وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُنْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ وَاعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Allah is talking to Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is telling him we know that your chest is become so tight because of what they are saying about you what is the solution? Say Subhanallah wa bihamdi and make prostration, make sujood and worship Allah until you die. So, in every situation, our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was facing a hardship, Allah immediately will give him the solution, which is say Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, Allah chose the best words for the angels to make tasbih. You know that the angels all the time they make tasbih. All the time they make supplications. From all the supplications that we all know of, Allah chose for the angels to say, Subhanallah wa bihamdi. From all the tasbih, he gave them this one to say Subhanallah wa bihamdi all the time. So someone will say, but we know that Al Istighfar will clean up your sins and will provide for you. Like kasrat al-istighfar, you see the rizq. When you say astaghfirullah, 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 this will bring you rizq. So this is true. It is true. But subhanallah wa bihamdih does the same thing. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man qala subhanallah wa bihamdih fi yawmin mi'atu marra hat if someone said subhanallah wa bihamdi 100 times a day all his sins will be forgiven even if they were as much as the foam that's on the sea so what does istighfar do it does this clean up your sins and subhanallah wa bihamdi does the same thing we have to understand something. Dear brothers and sisters, if we have some hardship in our life, either financial hardship, family hardship, work problems, it's because of us. It's because of our sins. It's not because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, مَا أَصَابَكَ مِنْ حَسَنَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَصَابَكَ مِنْ سَيِّئَةٍ فَمِنْ نَفْسِكَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, so whatever hasana, whatever something good happened, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever hardship or difficulties that you are facing, it's because of you. So, 
If you want to eliminate all this hardship, then you have to clean up all your sins. Because the sins are the one who prevent you to get the rizq. It's the one that cause you to have difficulties in your life. And the only way for you to get rid of this is to get rid of the sayyat, get rid of the sins. And you can get rid of the sins by saying, Subhanallah wa bihamdi, 100 times a day. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, someone heard him saying, Subhanallah wa bihamdi, astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayhi. So they asked him, why do you keep saying this? Subhanallah wa bihamdi, astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayhi. He said, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me a verse that when it comes, the sign, when it comes, then I have to say this. So they told him, what is the sign? He said, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْهُ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا Then when you see that we open for you Mecca, and you see all these nations are coming to Islam, then say, سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَبِحَمْدِ This is, this, is, this is big, you have, and this is why, subhanAllah, Nuh alayhi salam, all his experience, the 950 years of da'wah, he summarized it in this hadith. So now, we, let's talk about Al-Kibr. The... One of the two things that Prophet Muhammad, that Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam told them, told his son to stay away from. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam explained what is kibr. He said, Al-kibr huwa safahu al-haq wa ghamsu nas which is rejecting the truth and humiliating people. So, Pride is very dangerous sin. It's the most dangerous sin. You have to understand that the very first sin ever that we know of is kibr. When Iblis when the shaitan rejecting to prostrate to Adam السلام, because of kibr. So this is the first one. And it's very difficult, to, you need to understand something that Allah, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر He will not enter the Jannah. Whoever has a mustard or an atom of size of kibr, of pride in his heart. Ya Allah. Ya Allah. This is, this is, this is difficult. Mithqala dharra, an atom size of kibr, if somebody has in his heart, he will not go to the Jannah. And when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explaining, he said it means rejecting the truth. Do you know what does that mean, rejecting the truth? It's not rejecting Islam. No. It's not rejecting Islam because he's talking about two Muslims here. It's about that when somebody gives you an advice and telling you a hukm shar'i about something that is halal and tell you, brother, this is haram, you should not do this, you should do it this way, and you tell him you don't know anything and you reject it, this is kibr. When you belittle someone because he's giving you an advice and you don't want to hear it, you say, what do you know about it? You just came yesterday. Well, you don't know anything about it. I know everything about it. This is kib. This is pride. When someone advises you, you say, oh, Allah, Ya brother, ittaqillah, or Ya sister, ittaqillah, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because of this, this is haram, you should not sell this, or you should not do, deal with this. And you tell him, no, I'm fine, I am, this is America. This is kib. When Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was sitting and eating with someone, 
and the person was eating with his left hand. And Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said to him, eat with your right hand. He said, I cannot. Prophet Muhammad immediately said, and you will not. And since then, the man could not use his right hand. And he said, what's stopping him from eating from his right hand was the kibr, was his pride. Because he didn't like someone to correct him. He didn't like it. When if I'm praying and I'm doing something wrong by mistake, and somebody comes to me, brother, you... You said this hadith in the wrong way. You should have tashkeel here or there. I should jazakallah khairan. What do you, I should not tell him, how do you know? What do you know about it? I'm an Arab. I, you don't know anything. This is kibr. If you want to test yourself if you have a seed of kibr or not, look how you act when somebody advise you. Truly. Especially if that person who is advising you is younger than you or poorer than you or someone who is not in the same race from you. If you get upset, that means you have a seed of kibr. That will make you not go to the Jannah. Regardless, whatever you do, whatever we do, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not say the people who do not pray and have kibr will not go to Jannah. No, he made it obsolete to everybody. Something generalize it. لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر. Will not enter the Jannah whoever has in his heart a seed of kibr, pride. So what is ghamt in nas? Belittling people. Belittling people could be from anything. You belittle someone because he worked for you. How do you know? He, I'm giving you an advice. How do you know? I know what, what you do. He in yell at him. Belittling him. He wants to make him always remember, you work for me. You work for me. I'm the boss here. Let me tell you a quick true story happened to me. Um, in the beginning of this month, I had the privilege to go to the headquarters of, of the company that I work for. And we had this training for the managers. And I was sitting with, uh, we were sitting with uh, the CEO of the company and uh, who is the president of the company. And the vice president of the company, and you are, you are talking about people who are managing at least $17 billion. These people are managing $17 billion of business. And I was talking, and we were standing up, and paper fall from me. The CEO and the vice president, both of them, went down to pick up the paper before me. And they got it. And they gave it to me. I couldn't go back to the hotel. So the CEO said, I'm going to take you to the hotel. He took me in his car. And the way he was treating me, I could not believe it. When we were visiting someone, he invited us to a company, to someone's house. And I see the vice president. This is not his house. He is a guest. He's a guest, and he's serving the tea to everybody else. We are his employees. He's serving the tea to everybody. And when we pray, when we pray, the vice president was giving me my shoes because I could not reach it. Do you know what that did to me as, a, as an employee? Wallahi, I loved my job and increased my loyalty to this company 100%. And when I imagine 
how Prophet Muhammad, how the Sahaba was looking to Prophet Muhammad. He, those are employees still. The CEO, these regular people still. But when the Sahaba, now I understand how the Sahaba loved Prophet Muhammad and their loyalty to him, that they were ready to die for him. When he is the Prophet, he's the head of the state, he's the head of the army, and still he's in their service. He was helping them. No wonder. If that was my reaction toward my employer or my boss, no wonder the Sahaba had 1,000 times this kind of love toward Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I learned from this, and I told them, I learned from this uh, training, the best thing that I learned is humiliation. The best thing I learned in this training was humiliation. To be modest and humble. From everything they taught us, that was it. And no wonder when you humiliate yourself, when you humiliate yourself to people, Allah raised you up. And I saw it. How these people are handling billions of dollars. They humiliated themselves to the... Wallahi, I saw them, they talk to the people, the janitors, as if this janitor is like his... He, he is his brother. Not someone that he works for him. Astaghfirullah al إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات عملنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يهد ومن يضل فلا هادي له. I'm sorry for taking long time. There are a lot of things that I cut it off. This topic by itself, each topic by itself in this hadith can take many khutbas, not only one. So I need to. They told me to finish the khutbah quickly. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma yatina fi dunya hasanatan wa fi al-akhirati hasanatan wa qina azab al-nar. Allahumma aghfir lana wa al-muslimin ajma'ina ya Rabb al-alamin. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-afu wa al-afiyah fi dunya wa al-akhirah. اللهم إنا نسألك العفو والعافية في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد واقم الصلاة